UFOs are certainly popular. Where do these unidentified flying objects come from, and what are they? Coming up on today's edition of Origins, UFOs, a biblical perspective with Dr. Danny Faulkner. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Origins. My name is Don Chapman. It's my privilege to be your host. During this program, we showcase interesting guests who present evidence from science, along with other important facts, validating the truth of creation and the accuracy of God's Word. Today, our guest is Dr. Danny Faulkner. He has graduate degrees in physics and ast astronomy and has taught at the University of South Carolina, Lancaster, for over 26 years. He's been extensively involved in the creation science movement, writing many articles and serving on the board of directors of the Creation Research Society. Several years ago, Dr. Faulkner retired as a full professor and now has joined Answers in Genesis in Kentucky as a full-time scientist and speaker. Dr. Faulkner, it's always good when we have you here with us on Origins. Thank you, Don. What a privilege. Now, today we're going to talk about space aliens and the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, are you a science fiction fan? I'm not a big, big fan, but I do enjoy particularly uh, some TV shows and movies that uh, deal with those kind of things. And science fiction is fun. Uh, I think an important point to make is, is that uh, science fiction is, after all, fiction. fiction. It's not Maybe it's a, a little story. more fiction than science. <laughs> and you should be trying to make a point with it, and there's always a good teaching opportunity there. But yeah, science fiction is great. Okay. Yeah. So, how do we begin? Oh, well, first of all, I want to point out that uh, UFOs are... are um, are actually very popular things. Oh, they sure I think, are. Uh, I think aliens a whole bit really gets people going. And I've just illustrated with a few images here. Can you recognize some of these, Don? Oh, I know Dr. Spock up there. Uh, m Mr. Spock. Not oh, excuse that, me. Yeah. Not Doctor. Right. Doctor was the guy that wrote the book. Yeah. He wrote the book, okay. yeah. Mr. Spock, excuse Mr. me. Mr. Spock, live long and prosper. Uh, Do you see I'm any sorry. others? Yeah. No, I don't well, know. Well, this the is others. the Ferengi from uh, in the later Star Trek episode. Uh, his name was Cork, I believe. We got the, uh, the day the Earth stood still over here. That's a classic sci-fi from I think close to when I was born back in the fifties. But it's one of the most back in, back in 1990 when that was came out. Uh, we no, 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 it was, no. Okay. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But <laughs> they've been popular. For instance, can you recognize some of these? Ah, uh, I know Mork from Mork and Mindy. Yeah. Although I was more of a Mindy fan. Uh, I think most guys were. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Robin Williams was a very funny man. That was yes, the he was. first I ever heard of him. Yeah, that's where he broke yeah. in. Do you recognize the one above that? Uh, that's out of Star Wars, isn't it? No, close. It's um, a Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, okay. Done about the same time. And, of course, then we have, you know, this guy. I, uh, that's what I was pointing to. Yeah. Oh, okay. He, he's Darth Vader. You know? Darth Vader. <laughs> he's the bad guy, right? Yeah. 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 So, anyway, uh, these things are very popular, as you might see. Well, you know, with anything in life, we, we really, as Christians, we use the Bible as our authority. And so it's important to turn to them. So it's good to find out what the Bible says about aliens. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Although I'm questioning how much we're going to find, but let's look. Why have you have you have you read the chapter about aliens somewhere? I, no, I've read the Bible, but you haven't I mean, found a chapter. I in haven't there? found an alien. Well, that's good course, because they're yeah. not talked about <laughs> directly in the Bible. But you know what? Uh, so many times there are things that the Bible does not directly address. But what you do there is, if it doesn't say anything about this, then you have to kind of cast about. Can you recognize by these, by the way? Uh, I know uh, Elf. Okay, Alf. And I know Men in Black. Men in Black, okay. That's what, as far as I can go. Okay, that was E.T. on the right there. That oh, was a okay. classic Sorry. movie. Sure from it the, was. I, from, now that you say that, I The 1980s. I was, remember the uh, Reese's Pieces? They, You'll have to forgive was, me. I, okay. I'm I thought not you might great, know those. Uh, but again, the Bible doesn't say anything about UFOs, doesn't say anything about E.T.s, all these sorts of things. But like so many things in, in, in life, um, we can apply biblical principles. Precepts and principles. <clears throat> Precepts and principles. Do you recognize any of those? Oh, come on. Uh, we got the call box there. That's Doctor Who. He's an alien, by the way. I'm not a big Doctor Who fan, but Doctor Who is 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 uh, supposedly an alien. The other ones are ones from Star Trek, and the other ones from uh, the Simpsons TV show. So lots of things out there. 
Okay, what about biblical principles? I've got to stop reading theology and start watching more cartoons. Uh oh. Guess, or something like that. Here we go. <laughs> That's a bad idea. But you know, before we get really going in this, perhaps we ought to define a few terms. Because I That'd find be people mix terms up and get very confused Help me, on all of this. All right. Uh, for instance, um, the first one we want to define is ET. That stands for extraterrestrial. Terrestrial. Extra meaning outside of terrestrial, meaning the Earth. So presumably these are space aliens or creatures from somewhere else. And LGM. Do you know what LGM stands for? No, I don't. Little green men. Oh, sure. They're always uh, indicated as you know aliens, little green guys. I don't know All why right. they want to do green. But that's what they're always. Well, indicated. that's better than anything I was thinking of. So right. that's good. As it turns out, ET is a, is a very precise term. Uh huh. Flying saucer, however, is not. But I'll define a flying saucer as some sort of spaceship probably flown by LGMs, I guess. <laughs> and um, what I'm concerned about is many times people confuse flying saucer with this next term, UFO, unidentified flying object. And that is a precise scientific sort of term, if you will. Uh, have you ever seen a UFO? No, sir. Well, you know what? I have many times. Really? Sure, yeah. Well, think about it. If it's up in the sky and hovering or whatever, not falling, it's okay. in the sky, it's flying, it's an object of some sort, and uh, it's unidentified. So it's, well, it's a... It's unidentified to me, that's right. So it's unidentified, it's flying, and it's an object. If you've ever seen anything in the sky, you didn't know what it was, then you know it was a UFO. Okay. So have you seen any UFOs? I guess I've seen a lot of them. If not, you've not been paying attention is what That's I always right. tell people because everybody sees everybody them eventually. Sees something they don't know what it is. Contrast that to an IFO. An IFO is an, an identified, identified flying object. Like an object. airplane or a helicopter. There you go. Yeah. And I, I must tell you, I'm, I'm batting a thousand on this. Every time I've seen a UFO, I've been able to turn it into an IFO. You could track it down and find out what it was. Well, just figure it out. But I don't yeah. have to track it down, but figure it out. A lot of ways you can do that. And that's always should be our goal. Unfortunately, some people uh, kind of give up kind of fast. They see an object in the sky. They don't know what it is. They immediately conclude it's a, a, it's a, it's a UFO. It's a flying saucer. They're done. And that's really probably a, a bad approach to take on all of this. Well, uh, I want to make two notes. Do you like this? I love this flying saucer. Isn't that cute? He's up off the ground. He's, he's flying, yeah, he's on a saucer. But he's not an alien, I don't think. I hope not. Uh, anyway, uh, two notes. First of all, a UFO and a flying saucer are not the same thing. You know, I used to give planetarium shows back when I was in grad school many years ago. And over the years, this is before I started giving creation presentations. And I'll give a talk on astronomy. And particularly after planetarium shows and the Q&A, at least every show, somebody would raise their hand and they would, they would ask this question. Quite literally, they would say, what about UFOs? And what I was hearing was, what about unidentified flying objects? And uh, what I was hearing was that, but what they're asking, what they really meant to ask was, what about flying saucers? Because people were using these two terms interchangeably, and that's not a, that's not a good thing. Many times people sloppily say that. I've sometimes listened to a late night uh, uh, AM radio show, overnight show, and, and there they consistently use the word UFO when what they're clearly meaning is flying saucer. And I think they do that intentionally because if you say flying saucers, people think, ooh, kind of weird stuff. It doesn't you have know? the credibility as yeah. if you say UFO. But yeah. if you say UFO, then, then it sounds technical. It sounds like you know what you're talking about and you can be trusted. And what they really mean is flying saucer. So I encourage people, if you mean flying saucer, say that. If you mean UFO, say that. But they're not the same thing. Once you've identified it, by the way, if, it's, if, it's, if it is indeed a flying saucer and you've identified it, it's not a UFO anymore, is it, by definition? <laughs> so keep that in mind. Number two, our primary goal with any UFO is to make it an IFO. To All identify right. what's identified. Yeah. yeah. And okay. if you convert, if you make that conversion from a UFO to an IFO, uh, then, you, uh, then you've, you've done your job. Unfortunately, many people quit way too soon. I think it's because they want to believe in these UFOs as being flying saucers. And uh, I've, I've stuck with it every time. And I think if you stick with it, you'll be able to identify most of them. Not always, by the way, if you can't figure out what it is, does that mean it's a flying saucer? Of course not. No, of course not. That's a logical uh, error to think so. All righty. Uh, a couple of important questions. That's but, the Jetsons. Uh, yeah, very good. See, that goes one. back early 60s. When we were little kids, right? I, I do remember that. That was a one. fun show, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It's like the Flintstone set in the, in the yeah. modern and my, future times, really. But a couple of important questions is uh, where do ETs come from? Let's just assume for a minute that ETs exist. And if they do, they have to come from somewhere. 
And if they do, presumably they come from other planets. Now, these are either planets within our own solar system, like Mars or Venus or something, or they're from planets orbiting other stars. Probably far, far away. Far, far away, it would seem. Of course, that's a problem in transportation. Don't have time to talk about that today. But right. presumably other planets out there. Now, if that's the case, you have to really ask the question, if you really want to get the question of where do ETs come from, it's, ETs come from, it's not so much other planets that's the immediate answer, but the ultimate answer is where did life on those planets come from? All right? Now, there are really only two possibilities. Did they evolve? That is, was there no life on this planet, and then there was life, and then it evolved into what we see today? Or did God create them? <laughs> and, you know, I would hope that people who believe the Bible, if they believe in ETs, I mean, I believe that ETs exist, I think that they would believe that God created them. However, many people in the world think that life just arose spontaneously. And by the way, if you believe it arose spontaneously on other planets, you probably believe it happened here on the Earth. I would think that your worldview would affect those two things very much. That's right. And so they're, they're, ultimate, they're intimately related to one another. That's right. The, the real question is not about ETs. The real question is where we came from. <laughs> That's really the underlying, it's, it's, a, it's a worldview question. You've identified it very clearly there as a worldview question sort of question. So the real question is the origin of life on earth. Did we evolve or did we just happen? You see, if we just happen, there is no creator. If there is no creator, there's no such thing as sin. If, there's, uh, if there is no sin, there is no creator. There's no such thing as death as a penalty of sin. There's no need of salvation. Jesus Christ never laid down his life in atonement for sins for us. It's a direct assault upon the gospel message and Christianity and the Bible at its core. Absolutely. And so there are two worldviews, and I want to give you a couple of examples, maybe a couple more, of how this drives science today. We have two journals up here, one of them called Astrobiology, and the other one called the International Journal of Astrobiology. Notice that term, astrobiology, the study of life elsewhere in the universe. So it's the study of life elsewhere, okay. Mm -hmm. And one of these journals has been around for, I think, a dozen years, the other one 15 years. One of them's a quarterly, and one of them six issues a year. And uh, each issue packed with articles about presumably life elsewhere in the universe. Let's see, they, they've had what they call the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI for short. They, right. Uh, looking for, um, for uh, radio broadcasts right. from radio other planets right. around other stars. They've been doing this since 1960. Right. They have terabytes of data. How many uh, signals have we found? The big O. The big O. You know, here's a... An example of this sort of thing in SETI, you've got the uh, Arecibo radio dish. That's the largest single radio telescope in the world. This wow. is on top of a mountain in Puerto Rico. It's uh, uh, on a naturally occurring depression up there. And this big bowl is, oh, I don't know, a few hundred feet across. And you've got a radio receiver here. It's limited in where it can point. They steer it by moving this around, these cinches and these towers. This has actually been featured in uh, movies like, for instance, uh, Jodie Foster 20 years ago starred in a movie called Contact. It was based on a novel written by Carl Sagan right. about the first uh, contact with a civilization detected that way. Part of it, I think, was filmed here. Certainly, it was filmed out here in a, a radio telescope array in, in New Mexico. Uh, real telescopes use as a backdrop, if nothing else. So they were looking for... Uh, life on other planets through all this. And of course, they found something. There, otherwise, you have no, no story. But it turns out that there is a, uh, a lot of this, uh, the, the search continues to go on all the time on these things. You know, Frank Drake, who started the first SETI experiment in 1960, came up with the Drake equation, trying to estimate how many uh, civilizations might be out there we could listen in on. And it's a, it's, a, it's a product of seven different factors he puts together, like how many, uh, how many stars have planets and how many have life and all this kind of stuff. And how many of those actually have numbers associated with them? How many of them have any life? Well, zero so far. So that's where we are. Yeah, so we, we do this study. We do other experiments. We've, you know, we've been looking for extraterrestrial planets, trying to find planets like the Earth where life could exist. And we found about 2,000 planets now orbiting other stars. Do you know how many of those are Earth-like? None. So we have uh, several lines of evidence all suggesting that uh, I think scientifically we can conclude that we are alone according to the science. And uh, I can stand here today as a scientist and say because of the data we have, the best conclusion we can reach is we are alone in the universe. 
Now, somebody may say, well, wait a minute, the data may change next week, next month, uh, next year. And that's certainly true, but come back and talk to me then is my, my response, because we can't base scientific conclusions upon what we don't know. We can't base it on what we might know in the future. We have to base our scientific conclusions on what we know on right scientific now. Facts? Yes. Scientific facts as they now exist, yes. those scientific facts can change, of course, unlike biblical facts. Okay. But uh, we, if we base it upon what we know right now, uh, the best science, you come to the conclusion we are alone. And that's a very definite answer, I think. Well, we're not really alone because the, we know the Creator, but we're, the, we're, we're special and unique from That's right. everything else He made. Nothing like us. Because we have the precious gift of life and the precious gift of being made in His image. That's it. Now, Dr. Faulkner, we have to take a break, but I'm, I'm, I really want to see where you're going to go biblically with this. So, folks, you've got to come back as we apply this to God's Word and apply God's Word to the stuff we've been studying. So, you stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Origins. We're talking to Dr. Denny Faulkner today. We're talking about UFOs and the Bible. I, I just realized as you were showing me all those different examples to start the show that, I mean, we have cartoons, we have sitcoms, we have epic movies with unending sequels that attract millions of people and make billions of dollars. Why this huge fascination about UFOs? Well, I do believe it's an attempt to uh, explain life on this planet by some other means other than the creation. Okay. That uh, evolution really is driving the, the, the foundation of that. It's, as a Christian, I'm okay you know, fantasizing about this as long as you realize it's just fiction we're talking about. Right. But uh, to many people in the world, uh, this represents reality to them that yeah. if we've evolved, it would be inconceivable that life evolved only on the earth and nowhere else because that would make right. the universe, the earth unique right. and make it special and that kind of drags you right back to creation right. doesn't it if we have a unique status so they want to make us just very typical of what's going on in the universe so life must be abundant hence if we can travel through space so can they with higher technology even come to our planet in fact instead of us being special we're kind of sometimes you listen to them and it's almost like we're the guilty ones if because they're so far advanced from us that if we just wise up a little bit, we could invent the right machine so we could all get united with them. Yeah. And so we're the dumb ones, not the special ones. That's right. Yeah. Well, we've got, uh, did God create ETs? I know the audience is holding their breath to find <laughs> okay. out. It's... Well, we talked about evolution before the break and right. did, 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 did they evolve? And I, I think there are good reasons. And yes. many of your shows on, on Origins TV would, would give you reasons why they don't evolve. But suppose somebody would say, well, maybe God created ETs. And I'd like to ask the question then, are they like us in any respects? I mean, they're intelligent. They're social creatures. You can't build a spacecraft by yourself. In many respects, they would have to be very similar to us. Yeah. And if that is the case, then are they in need of salvation like we are? That's a very big part of what we are, is it not? Humanity. Now, if that's the case, if, if, if they're in need of salvation, the question arises, why? Why are they in need of salvation? Well, was it because of Adam's sin? You see, Adam, we, we know from the New Testament and the Old Testament, disobeyed and it brought, uh, disobedience brought death and death through that disobedience and yes. all die through him. But through the last Adam, Jesus Christ, all may be made alive. Well, here's the problem. Uh, if it's because of Adam's sin, you realize, of course, to them, we're the aliens. <laughs> Adam was an alien. Jesus is an alien. So could you imagine sharing the gospel on one of these alien worlds? Wouldn't it start off something like this? A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away? Right. Doesn't make much sense, does it? No. That really kind of cheapens the whole thing. Well, then you have the situation, well, maybe sin did not enter that world. Maybe, uh, right. maybe these are perfect beings that somehow escaped this. But you know, um, if that's the case, we also have in, in, uh, in the New Testament the fact that the uh, book of Romans chapter 8 talks about the taint of sin over the entire creation. So they're living in a world with, with that taint of sin. So Romans 8, 18 through 25 would seem to include these alien worlds. So how could you have perfect unfallen creatures living in a world that's tainted 
uh, with the effects of Adam's sin. And that's, that's a real problem as well. Speaking of our uniqueness again, that, that's fascinating that it says all of creation was affected by our sins, like we're the main characters. That's it. Again, get yeah. back to the centrality. You right. know, maybe, maybe we're not geographically the center of the universe, but we certainly are the center of God's attention. Yeah. And our effects are very large. You know, it's not just from those passages like Romans 8, but also uh, 2 Peter uh, the book of Revelation and also some Old Testament passages talk about there being a new heaven and a new earth one That's day. Right. That's right. And I think it's because both the earth and the heaven need to be redeemed from, uh, from the taint of man's sin right. upon the world Creation around us. That's right. So I, I think uh, I can conclude biblically that we are alone. So get back to the question. Scientifically, they argue before the break. I think there's a very good case from the known data now that we are alone, uh, at least as far as physical beings like us, not spiritual beings. And biblically, they are the same. Don, don't you love it when science agrees with the Bible? I do. You, now, you don't, you don't want to say when Bible agrees with the science because science changes, the Bible doesn't. But here it's fine because the science is caught up with the Bible, I think, in this respect. <laughs> now, I've been talking about intelligent life like me and you. Hope We are intelligent enough, I hope. Yeah. All right, you but are. We, okay, we have, uh, we have uh, does this preclude animal life or, or plant life or, or mar microorganisms on, on a planet, alien planet? That's a fair question. But you know what? There's dominion and purpose involved in all of this. If you look at Psalm 8, for instance, we are clearly given dominion over the, over the animals and plants on this world. We're given demand, dominion in chapter 2 of Genesis. There's a dominion there. And if you don't have beings like us on these alien worlds, worlds with, that are otherwise like the earth, then there's nobody in charge. And that seems to be fundamentally different, fundamentally different from what we have on this planet. Now, are planets alive? Well, biologically they are, but biblically are they alive? Well, you know, in the book of Levit Leviticus, it gives a criterion for life. What is it? The life is in the blood, blood. isn't it? Yes, yes. Now, do plants have blood? No. No. In fact, a lot of creatures we think of as being alive, such as microorganisms, don't have blood either nor do they have uh, breath in their nostrils. This is another uh, characteristic of life given yeah, at least the time sure. of the flood. Right. So uh, even though these are alive in some biological or modern scientific sense, I would argue that they are not alive biblically. And that is a very important distinction uh, to make here, that these things are not alive in that case. And I think the answer is a very definitive no. So consequently, I can speak of life in that way. And probably, I, I, I think my case is less sure in this case, but I don't think even that kind of life exists out there on other planets. Now, what are UFOs? Now, that's a question. If I, if I told you they're not ETs, they're not LGMs, then what are they? I am convinced from my study, and this goes back you know, 40 years, 45 years, I'm convinced the vast majority of misidentifications, people fail to convert UFOs to IFOs. And again, if you can't convert one, it doesn't mean it's automatically a flying saucer. And we agreed, no, that doesn't follow logically. Some were out and out hoaxes. You heard of crop circles? Those sure. were places where they supposedly uh, sure. grain was flattened down right. a swirling right. pattern. It was very definitively shown to be a hoax. And some remain unexplained, but again, as I've said, that doesn't automatically mean that aliens have visited this planet. That just does not follow. So between the misidentifications, the hoaxes, we have a few unexplained, but again, that doesn't mean that they're flying saucers. You need to keep that in mind. That's, that's just sloppy logic otherwise. So, uh, there's a spiritual battle involved. Some people have argued that these are lights in the sky and Satan appears as an angel of light. So maybe these are just physically demonic manifestations. I don't like going there for a number of reasons. I think uh, some people want to tie eschatology into that. There's always an occult connection with, uh, you find a lot of people that claim uh, that they've been abducted and so forth. They, uh, they, they have an occult connection the vast majority of the times. But you know what? This whole thing reinforces a belief in evolution. And I think that's the real satanic deception. Subtle as it is, it is very important because the more and more people believe that life evolved elsewhere, the more and more they believe it happened here. And this will ultimately deflect our attention away from the true and living God. And I think that's profound and it's true. Uh, you know, one of the arguments for why there is no fossil record for the evolution of man on earth was that it happened on some other planet and came here. So mm -hmm. there is that interconnection, uh, that case overtly, but mostly invertly, the assumptions that make us believe evolution make us believe in UFOs. Is that fair to say? Yep. Yeah. But you know, we got to deal with reality. Reality is what we can test and see. The Bible says, taste and see the Lord is good. And I like that. And I, I like the fact that my faith is founded on a historical event. 
that Jesus Christ, God become a man, died for my sin, and then he rose from the dead. And because he arose and is alive, we can live too. And you know, that's a historical fact grounded in reality. This is fiction. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that concerns me for many of our young people, and some of them are, aren't so young anymore, is that they are so consumed by this, they lose touch with reality. And I, I pity anyone who gets so into UFOs that they need the one who is going to come from the sky and put his foot on the Mount of Olives and become King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he's the one we ought to seek. Dr. Faulkner, what a uh, thought-provoking and enlightening show. And you've given us a lot to think about, and uh, it was enjoyable uh, besides all that. So thank you so much. My friends, don't you ever forget, it's God's view that he created you. That should be your worldview, too. Hope to see you again soon here on Origins. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for watching this edition of Origins. For a DVD of this series, you can order online or send a $12 donation to cover shipping and handling and write to Origins Program number 1701, Cornerstone Network, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148. If you like a copy of the PowerPoint information presented today, you can download an episode guide at originstv.org. Origins is made possible by the faithful prayers and financial support of you, our Cornerstone family.